He's up, Golf Kingdom. That's right, it's our cash money show. I'm gonna give you things that you're gonna to use to cash in on the golf course. Not only is it gonna rain money on me, it's gonna rain money on you as you do these simple drills that are gonna help you perfect certain things on the golf course and cash in. Let's bring in our show. Here's what we've got, build it right off the bat. I'm gonna give you drills that you're gonna cash in immediately with to help you get just perfect with your grip. After that, we're gonna go on course. Yeah, we're gonna use actual money on the golf course to help your bunker play. Down here, I got Mark Sweeney coming with some money tips on putting from Aimpoint. Down in the bottom half of the show, we got some great stuff. We've got Mental Game, we've got Talk Nerdy. We're gonna go deep thoughts with David, and as always, we're gonna close with, it's a time to rise. Are you ready to build? Because it's time to build here in coins, coins, ow. It's time to build here in the golf kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the golf kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Well, like I said in the opening, this is our cash money show. Everything I'm gonna do today is guaranteed to help you cash in with something simple that'll be an instant fix or an instant improvement in your game. So I'm gonna keep the dollar sign on here in our building segment. And what we wanna talk about right off is, I wanna talk about your grip. I wanna talk about a way to cash in and use money to get your grip right. And so the grip, this is your only contact with the club. The hands are the dials for the face. If you get things in the wrong spot on the grip, you're gonna have this club face in a weird place and you're gonna make compensations in your swing. So we don't wanna be really weird with our grip. And I see some weird things happen. So come on down tight on my hands, I'll show you. A couple things that are interesting here. When we grip the club, you'll see players put their thumb, their lead hand thumb right on top of the club and this turns the hand way under. This is a really, really weak grip. Now come back up on me. I want you to think about this. Use the word weak positively in a sentence or give me an example of something good that's weak. You want a weak roof on your house? You want a weak engine in your car? How about you want a weak bladder? No, we don't want anything that's weak. So I definitely don't want a weak grip on the club. So come back down to me here. That's weak. A neutral grip would have the thumb go from the top or 12 o'clock over to one where I can see a couple knuckles here. If I put the thumb way to the side, this would be a super strong grip where I see all the knuckles of my lead hand. Now, if you notice, I've got the thumb pinched here. I see a lot of thumbs that get wide on a grip. So they'll put the player, get their hands on there, the thumbs will look like this. The thumbs won't be together. So back on me. Now, this is where the first money drill comes in to help you get the thumbs right and get your grip right. So I'm gonna get in my pocket here and I've got some coins. So I've got a couple of quarters and a penny. So I'm gonna drop the penny in the front, front pocket here. We're gonna use the quarters to start with first. If you take the quarters and pinch them in your thumbs right there. So I'm gonna pinch one in my lead hand, pinch one in my trail hand. So the thumbs will pinch. So pinch the thumbs of the quarters, put this thumb over here at one o'clock and then bring your trail hand on and keep it pinched. That thumb will pinch and sit on the opposite side of the grip. It doesn't sit on top, it doesn't sit over there it sits on the opposite side of the grip. And as you, as you can see, I've got a perfect grip here with the thumbs pinched in a perfect spot. Now, the question is, how do I make sure other than getting this thumb in this position at 12 o'clock, how do I make sure I get this hand turned over on top of the grip? Because I can put the thumb there and still put it in the lifeline here, which still makes my grip in a weak position and sloppy where the club wobbles in my hand. This is where the penny comes in. Let me get in my tool belt here, grab my penny. There's my penny. So I'm gonna take the quarters out. I want you to take the penny and put it right on top of the grip. What you're gonna do is take the heel pad of your hand here and you're gonna put it right on top of the penny. In order to do that, I gotta twist this hand over and get it right on top. Now I've got it right on top of the grip. Now watch this cool trick. I can hold this club with one finger now because I've got it locked under my index finger and underneath the heel pad. This grip is not only strong, but it's secure. The club won't wander around in my hand. I can't move it. So cash money, grab your quarters and your pennies. Use them to get your grip just right. If your grip is right, this will be under control and you won't have to make compensations for having a weird grip. Grip, it should be the easiest thing we do in order to cash it on the course. Practice this and it will help you a bunch. Now, 
let's jump out on the golf course. Well, we've traveled all the way from the studio out here to the golf course for our on-course segment, and I've got us down here in this deep bunker. Come on, get down in here with me. We're in this deep bunker. I'm going to teach you how to be cash money in the bunker. Yeah, I'm going to teach you maybe how to get a few more sandies out of your buddy's pockets by using cash in the bunker. Let me explain the error, and then we'll talk about the right way to do it. So the error in the bunker is I see players come down, and they get real deep in the bunker. So they come down, and they take this deep gouge out of the sand. Well, that's great if the ball is buried, but we don't want a deep gouge out of the sand. We want a shallow pass where they use the flange and it kind of thumps through the sand. We want the club coming through nice and shallow out of the sand. You can see it's shallow. It's not digging in the bunker. So the question is, how do we get shallow in the sand to become cash money? Well, we need cash money. I happen to have some cash here. What have I got? What did I bring with me? I brought, there's a, there's a, a dollar bill. Holy smokes, that's a Benjamin. I brought a hundo with me. I got a hundred dollars with me, and I got a dollar bill. Um, tell you what, let's 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 start with the dollar first, and we'll see if I can do it with the dollar good enough that I'll bring out the hundred. Now, here's the deal: what you want to do is take the dollar bill, set it in the bunker, and put the, the ball right on George Washington's face. Put it right in the middle of the bill. The bill will curl up on the ends, and it will show you how to slide the club under the ball and get shallow in the sand. It's a great little cool teaching way to do it. It looks like this when you put it on the ground as you look down at it from above in the sand. So let me explain how we do this now. So we take the dollar bill. I'm going to put it down here in the sand. I'm going to put the ball right on top. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you the wrong way first. If I chop right down on the bill, and I hit like right down on it, I'm going to drive the bill into the sand. And you can see the bill didn't go anywhere. I stuck it right there and it didn't go anywhere at all. It just went right down in the sand and went right here. We don't want to strike down like that. You can see the big hole I made in the sand. Remember, we want to be shallow. We want to slide it under there. I'm just, 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 just destroyed this dollar bill. Let me put it back down there again. Ball right on George Washington's face. Now the ends of the bill curled up a little bit. Now I can see I want to slide the club shallow under the ball and just flip it under the ball and flip the bill and the ball out of there. You'll see both of them flip up in the air now. So here's how we do it. Ball is forward on my lead foot. I get a little pressure in my lead side, so I'm not shifting around. I'm locking myself here, and I'm trying to level out. If I get pitched this way, I'm going to bottom out way behind it and drop kick it. So I'm in here, ball forward, a little pressure on my lead foot. I'm leveled out. Now I'm just trying to slide the club right under the bill. And the bill went flipping down the sand with the ball. I flipped it right under there. Look at that nice little shallow patch of sand I hit out of there. That's the perfect way to get good in the bunker is slide it out of there and flip the bill out there. Gosh, where'd the bill go? There it is. I see it sitting up there. I'm a little worried it's going to blow away. Well, it's only a dollar. But you know what? I felt good about that. Let's pull this one out. Okay, let's pull the, the Benjamin out of here. Let's put him down. So I'm going to put him down. I'm going to put the ball right on Benjamin Franklin's nose. We got a little breeze curling the end of it up. Stay there. There we go. Good. Okay, now I can see right underneath the back of it. I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to flip this. Hang on. We got the breeze blowing the bill around here. Come on, Mother Nature. Cooperate for us. There we go. I got a little low in the breeze. Now I can slide this right under there. Pressure left. Ball forward. Slide the club right under the bill and flip the bill and the ball out of there together. Boy, that was really good. The bill flipped up. It's right over there. I didn't drive it into the sand. Okay, bunker technique. Put your bill down. Put the ball in. Look at the bill's blowing back to me. Got him. Okay, <laughs> that could have gone anywhere. There's just a lake right over there, too. It could have blown right in the lake for some lucky fisherman to find. I got him in my pocket now. So ball forward towards my lead hill. A little pressure here so we're not shifting. Level out and just slide the club right under the bill and flip the bill and the ball out of there. This will make you cash money in the bunker. Like I said, start off with the dollar bill. And if you get really good, throw your 100 down there. But this would be a great way for you to get better in the sand and shallower through the shot. Now, let's head back to the studio. Everybody loves the kiss Mwah! segment here on Golf Kingdom where I keep it simple strano, K-I-S-S. -S. And we're gonna keep it simple and cash in on the greens. And one thing you're gonna need here is big money. So in my pocket, I've got a bunch of pennies. <laughs> Not big money, but I've got three pennies, and we're going to teach putting tempo here, because I see a lot of players that take the putter back slow and then whack at it, and that's not the best way to go farther or shorter in putting. 
we want to keep our tempo the same and just go bigger or shorter with our backstroke to hit the ball farther on the green. Now, Daredevil, come to the big screen, and we're going to have a picture in picture here also of the putter close up. But what you want to do is you want to put the pennies in the back of your putter. They're light, they're small, they'll fit, and they're easy to throw out. So I want to practice first taking strokes and keeping the pennies in the putter. This will really help your tempo stay smooth. If I go back, oops, I dumped them out there. If I go back and come through too quick, see that I dumped them right out. So I want to hit a couple of putts here and show you this. I got to, I got to clear some of our money here to hit putts. So I got a clean path. So I'm going to put the pennies in there, get a golf ball in here. Now watch, I'm going to go back and stay smooth coming through and the pennies will stay in there. They come out at impact because of contact, but I didn't throw them out in transition. This would be the wrong way. Again, we got the close up view going on here. Here's the wrong one where I come through and I throw them out and see, I threw the pennies out. We don't want to do that. We want to keep the tempo smooth back and through. Pennies, it's cash money. Put them in the back of your putter and keep them there. And I tell you what, you'll keep making putts on the golf course. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? Okay, here's mine. The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com. Welcome back to the Golf Kingdom. And as usual, I've got a great guest for you to help your game. It's my buddy, Mark Sweeney from Aimpoint Golf, especially putting. Mark's gonna to talk to us today about wind effect when you putt, which is something you don't think about. Take it, Mark. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me on Golf Kingdom. Uh, one of the biggest questions I get asked about is wind. Um, it, it's probably one of the most difficult to predict, especially a gusty wind. Uh, a steady wind's a lot easier to predict, but the gusty winds is where people really don't have any guideline of, of how it's gonna affect the putt. Uh, the first thing is the wind does affect the putt, no question about it, uh, especially by the time it gets to 8 or 10 miles an hour, it's definitely changing the path of the putt. The faster the green is, the more wind affects it. So wind on a, across a Stimp 12 green has a bigger effect than wind across a Stimp 8 green. Um, our general guideline is about 10 miles an hour is going to add or subtract one whole value off the break. So if you do aim point and it's breaking like a 2% break, if the wind's going down the slope, it's going to make it break like a three. If it's going up the slope, it's going to make it break more like a one. At 20 miles an hour, it's more than double that. Um, at about 30 miles an hour, the ball is not going to stay on the golf green. If you drop it on the golf green, it's going to get pushed off by itself, and the ball's going to break uphill primarily. Uh, at, at 30 miles an hour wind, the ball's not going to break downhill. So all bets are off by, by that much wind speed. Um, but typically in golf, we're going to be dealing with kind of, you know, five to 15 miles an hour is getting pretty strong um but you have to you have to factor it in uh it's less of a factor on short putts so on four and five footers it's not as important as on a 20 footer um and the way i like to always think about it is is the wind blowing up slope or down slope so if the wind is blowing down the slope you've got to add break roughly one one percent per 10 miles an hour um and if it's blowing up the slope you have to take away break if you're downwind, putting downwind, it's going to add a little bit of break, but not as much as if it's going across the slope. And if you're putting into the wind, it's going to reduce the break because you basically got to hit the putt harder and it's going to get there a little quicker so the break reduces a little bit. Um, gusty wind's tough because if, if it's gusting or not gusting at the time of the putt, it's going to really change it and there's nothing really you can do about it, frankly. Uh, what I like to do with gusty days is as soon as a gust comes, wait till it just is about to go away and then hit your putt because you've usually got three to five seconds between between gusts. So you have a little bit of a break, but you have to kind of be ready for it. That'll make it a little more predictable what the ball's going to do. Holy smokes, that was some money stuff from Mark Sweeney on how to factor in wind on the green. Something I guarantee you, you're not doing when you hit a putt is figuring out what's the wind gonna do this ball when the flags are out. Now, speaking of putting on the greens, tell you what, let's jump back out in the golf course where I wanna help you on the greens with those pesky tap-ins. Boy, that was a good little shot I hit there. Let me go ahead and knock that in, guys. Let me, let me tap this in and get it out of the way. Oh no, oops, I missed it. That terrifying two-footer. 
do you find yourself struggling to tap it in? It's super close. We should be able to make it 100% of the time, but I see players missing it, and I find them being terrified of that two-foot tap-in. Let me explain a technique change that's super simple, and it's something that all great players do when they tap it in, and I bet you'll make these 100% of the time. So let me get rid of the flag here. We're going to come back to this two-footer. Now, here I am right here. Maybe I've hit a good chip shot or a good lag putt. This is a big hole on a small ball. I should be able to just brush this in. I'm only two feet from the hole. I mean, a size 10 shoe is about the size of a ruler. I'm two feet from the hole. If you walk in and you put all your weight on your lead leg and you come up on your rear toe and tilt forward, what that does is it makes you hit down on the ball. The ball squirts right. It also moves you ahead of the ball, and you aim to the right. So when you come in and do that, there it goes. I hit the right edge and lift out. Flip it. You want to go the other way. You want to go heavy on the trail foot. Tip behind the ball. Come up on the lead toe. Watch your tour events. All your players tapping it in, you'll see them go this way. I call it right foot, one foot. But it's, it's trail foot heavy. Up on the lead toe, tipped back to behind the ball. Now I can see where I'm aimed. I'm looking through the back of the ball. And when I hit it, I'm not hitting down. I'm hitting up on it. And I tap it in right in the middle. Okay, so let's review this. Wrong way. On the front leg, up off the back leg, tip down. I hit down and it squirts right. Correct way. Flip it the other way. I'm going to tip onto my trail leg, come up onto my lead toe. All my weight is here. I am pitched behind the ball. Now I can tap it in and roll it end over end every time. Simple little technique adjustment. Try it. Practice it. I bet you'll get a ton better at these little tap-ins, and they won't be the terrible two-footers anymore. Well, in the golf kingdom, we talk a lot about your game. We talk about your swing, your putting, your chipping, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about mental game. And I want to get into the mental side of the game right now. And we use technology a lot. We've used flight scope. We've used um, technology such as K-Coach, we've used blast putting, we've used a bunch of things, but I've got special technology here that's going to help us with the mental game. I'm going to get in touch with your mind and talk to you about the mental way you need to be ready to practice and take a golf lesson from your coach. So let me get you plugged in here. So we got the, we got the sensors running. I'm going to put this in my ear, which is going to allow me to listen to when I'm connected to your brain. Okay, I got you. I just connected, I can hear you out there. So let's talk mental game and how you take a lesson. Now, your coach will give you a video or you'll watch a video or you'll talk about what you wanna work on. What do you wanna improve? Maybe you gotta fix a move in the backswing or downswing or impact. And now you'll kinda of practice that move and then you'll put a golf ball in there. Now here's the mistake everybody makes when they try it for the first time. They'll take a swing and the ball will go some crazy direction or maybe you'll roll on the ground and you'll go, well, that didn't work. Now what? Wait, I can hear you. That's exactly, you're, you're going, yeah, that's what I think. I try it one time and it doesn't work. No, that's the wrong way to think. And this is what I tell my players. I say, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put the ball down and I don't care where you hit it for the next five, 10, 15, or 20 swings. Cause it's gonna take you a few swings to get used to the feel. And I don't care where the ball goes. Cause if you quit on the first try, what if it works on the fifth one? What if it works on the eighth one? What if it works on the 14th one? My job is to keep you focused doing it. Hang on. See, I hear you, you're going, yeah, I like that thought. Yeah, don't give up on the first try. Stay with it. My players usually on about the fifth or sixth try, all of a sudden, bang, they hit a really good one and they're like, hey, I like that, that feels better. The golf ball won't lie to us when you do it right the ball responds. So mental game. We've got our new mental headgear we're going to use in the golf kingdom to help connect with you and share mental game. And today was about how to take a lesson and improve the way you mentally approach a change in your swing. Alexa, open golf kingdom. Alexa, stop. If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. 
Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the golf kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day. Well, I love when it's talk nerdy time because right now we've got golf scientists, yeah, golf scientists out there studying the body, the club, how the body and club work together, how the club and the ball interact and how we hit good golf shots. And talking nerdy today, we're talking shoulders. We're gonna talk nerdy shoulders. We're gonna talk about how the shoulders move. Yeah, we can get them going and become a really good dancer, but if we do this and hit a golf ball, it isn't gonna be a good shot. And the shoulders are what's called a closed loop circuit. Okay, what in the nerdy world does that mean? Daredevil, come widescreen for me here. Let me show you what a closed loop circuit does to your hands when you do a simple movement. Everybody get up and do this with me. This is a fun little drill I do with my students. To help them see the roll of the hands and shoulders together. So get your fingers like you're hitchhiking, put them at your sides. So point them straight ahead, I'm pointing them straight at the camera. Now what you're gonna do is no twisting, just lift your hands and arms straight up. Just like that, don't twist them, straight up. Now. Go straight out to the side. Don't twist them. Straight out to the side. Now bring them straight down to your sides. Oh, uh oh, wait a second. My hands aren't where they started. And if I'm standing here like this to get my thumbs out, I got to twist. But if I go up, over, and down, I end up in that twisted position. What that explains is the roll of the hands going back. If I put the hitchhiker thumbs out and I go back and don't twist, they naturally turn. See, they're not pointing at the camera now your shoulders will produce the correct amount of hand movement going back. So if I grab a club and don't twist on it, that closed loop circuit will naturally make the club open as it goes back. So think about your shoulders this way. Think about the hitchhiker thumbs. I'm not doing this going back and I'm not doing this going back. I'm just letting my shoulders naturally move my hands, which naturally opens the face. So talking nerdy, nerdy shoulder movement, tell you what, if you follow this little drill and understand how the shoulders move, it'll keep the club more calm and you'll hit better shots. 100 bucks, you missed this putt. Pay up. That's right, 100 bucks. Get out of here, loser. Betting in golf is something that happens all the time with you and your buddies. And you know what? It helps your game a lot and it helps you deal with stress on the golf course and pressure. And so betting is good for you. Now, my buddy David Ogren has got some great stuff in regards to betting to help your game. It's time for Deep Thoughts with David. You know, if you really like golf, you understand that the secret of golf is turning three shots into two. Ben Crenshaw told me that. That's a quote from Bobby Jones. So a lot of deep, deep thoughts on that one. But as a boy, me and my buds, we would chip and putt for hours, and we would do it for money. I don't see a lot of that in this day and age. I don't see a lot of groups of kids getting out there or groups of players getting out there chipping and putting for money. My dad had this little game he played on the putting green with his guys, and they'd putt for money. I'll tell you what, maybe the best way to learn how to do these things is to put a little skin in the game. Quarter here, 50 cent there. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I, think, I think it's important that developing players, especially young guys, especially young guys who think they can play, let them lose a few quid and see if they don't get better. Yeah, I think that's what, uh, I think that's what we ought to do. You know what? Those are great deep thoughts from David. And growing up, we used to chip and putt for Cokes and candy bars. We put a little skin in the game, as he said. So. Put a little betting out there, put a little cash money out there and see if that pressure, hmm, doesn't just help your game. <sighs> yeah, it's time to rise and we're gonna talk about some life stuff and some golf stuff here to help you. And our word for today is preparation, being prepared for when that big moment comes. Let's give you a little gif here to help you see that. Watch this gif. This is an interesting thing of a dandelion. Now, the interesting thing about this is the dandelion seeds float away. They're seeds in the wind. And growing up in the Midwest, we'd love to pick these things up and blow them and watch the seeds float all over the place. But the interesting thing was, we never knew where the seeds were gonna go. We never knew when they were gonna get in the ground and get some water and grow. But they always grew something, and in this case, they grew more dandelions. So practice, 
or studies. Maybe you're studying for a final or talk, taking a new job. They're like seeds in the wind. You never know when they're gonna pay off. You never know when that practice is gonna pay off. But you keep practicing, you keep preparing, and you keep working hard so that when that time comes, you're prepared for it, for that career low round, or maybe to win a tournament. And that's where all that preparation pays off. It's like the story of the two farmers. They're both praying for rain. And you know what? One farmer decided, I'm gonna till my fields and get them ready for when the rain comes. And the other one stood and went, huh, I wonder when it's gonna rain. Which one of the two guys was prepared for when the rain came? The guy who tilled his fields. I want you to prepare. I want you to till your fields. I want you to continue to work hard at what you're doing, whether it's practicing or studying or getting ready for a new job. Because when that opportunity comes, I want you to be prepared for it and nail it. That thing right there I showed you, the dandelion, the seeds in the wind, you're getting those seeds out there and you're waiting for them to, to hit the ground and get ready to grow. So be prepared for it, keep working, keep focused, and keep grinding. Thanks for joining us on the cash money episode of the Golf Kingdom. We gave you some great tips to cash in, some things that are instant fixes for your game. Now, be sure you jump over to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all those social media places. We've got some great stuff there for your game. Some behind the scenes stuff from today's shoot. You can find that at the Golf Kingdom on Facebook. Also, if you have an Alexa skill, ask her. Say, hey Alexa, open the Golf Kingdom. You'll get a great tip from me every day to help your game. Some more cash money out there on Alexa. Also, you can go to thegolfkingdomtv.com and you can find our website. We've got all kinds of interesting things there. Now, thanks again for joining me on the cash episode of the Golf Kingdom.